Hello, everyone. I'm so excited. Today we've got with us Daisy Thomas. She is the candidate for House District 46 in the southeast part of uh, Salt Lake County. So she's covering Cottonwood Heights, Sandy, uh, Holiday, Alta. Where else, Daisy? Murray, what else? Murrayville and Brighton. Just parts of Murray, Murrayville and Brighton. Oh my gosh. Uh, it's a big, big uh, district geographically. We're excited to have her on the show. Daisy, what do you want to talk about today? Um, well, there's all sorts of things to talk about, but I think given what we're dealing with with this worldwide pandemic, health care is a number one issue for our residents in House District 46. How does, the, how does this impact you? What, what makes this personal for you? Health care in general or Medicare for all? Um, the fact is, you know, I am very privileged in that I have excellent insurance through my husband's um, employer. However, whenever the employer decides to switch companies or if we were to move jobs, our health care is then in flux. And when you move insur insurers, you often will have to change providers. When you have a family who are um, immunocompromised or otherwise needs uh, specific care, finding those specialists is not something that's really easy to do. And so you don't want to have to switch year after year having that kind of um, foundation for your medical care as a baseline is um, how people can avoid the stressors that come with it so that they can focus solely on healing or whatever they need to make their health optimum. In what ways are you personally seeing that the coronavirus crisis is highlighting the gaps in our health uh, our healthcare system in the United States? Sure, well, number one, we're seeing that our frontline operatives um, don't have enough resources and there's not enough of them. We do not have enough nurses, we don't have enough PAs, we don't have enough of the people who are the ones who would be taking care of people in crisis. We need more EMTs, we need more people with these kind of skills. And when they're overworked, um, when their benefits get cut because a lot of states don't allow unionization for nurses and other medical staffers, you have less of an opportunity to see that growth in that industry. Most people don't wanna go into it um, not knowing that they'll have security in the future. Now, you know, in the medical field, we know that those jobs will continue on, but when you're working 10, 16, 20 hour shifts sometimes, it's just unacceptable. And so that's just one aspect that we're seeing with this crisis. We're also seeing all the people who are afraid of the implications of even going to the emergency room, going to get checked up because they don't have, they fall in the Medicare gap. And so the amount of people that could be infected is exponential. At the end of the month, we could see if people don't take this virus seriously, 20,000 more people in the hospitals within 20 days, that's just not acceptable. And um, in 2020, in Utah of all places, we wanna make sure that we are leading the way on our volunteer efforts, on our medical efforts, on our innovations, because that's the kind of state that we are. Yeah, that's a, a great point, Daisy. Uh, Daisy, as you think about going forward, what are some of the things that you wish the federal government were doing to fix the system? Well, number one, there needs to be a moratorium on all uh, rent, mortgage, and um, those kind of utility bills because with no one able to leave their homes, a lot of people are losing income at drastic levels, and most people do not have the three to six month savings that is recommended by financial planners. It would be lovely if we all could do that, but most people live paycheck to paycheck. And so when your hours get cut at the restaurant that you work at your second job at because you're a teacher and can't afford to live on one paycheck, and now the schools are closed as well until May 1st in Utah, that impacts your financial stability, which impacts your family home situation, all of the, the things that keep our society functioning and in good spirits with one another it's all crumbling before our eyes because there is not enough of a social safety net because it has been dismantled over the past 40 years. Well, Daisy, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today. Oh, uh, one final question. Absolutely. What is your superpower? 
Oh, um, I would normally say my empathy, but I think it's my resilience. I think that one is uh, one I'm very proud of. Well, uh, that is a, a great superpower. Well, Daisy, tell people how they can learn more about your campaign before we wrap up. You can go to my website at daisyforutah.com. It's all spelled out. Um, it'll be updated within the next uh, short time. We'll see how that happens. Um, social media as well. I am, You can locate my personal page at facebook.com slash the Daisy Thomas. I'm also on Twitter and Instagram. Fantastic, Daisy. Thank you very much for taking the time to be with us. And we wish you every success in your campaign. Thank you so much for having me, Devin. Thank you. All righty. Let's do some good. You too. I'm Devin Thorpe. For the last eight years, I've been working full time to eradicate extreme poverty, improve global health and fight climate change. I've concluded that the best way for me to continue my work is to run for Congress to represent the people of Utah's third district. In Utah, we have common shared values. Those things unite us. I believe passionately in our ability to come together. And I believe that working together, we can solve Utah's problems. I'm Devin Thorpe. I'm a Democrat. I'm running to represent the people of Utah's third district. I'm Devin Thorpe, a candidate for Congress, and I approve this message.